So good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizer for giving us the opportunity to present today. And obviously the audience for your interest and taking the time to hear what we are up to here at Logic Bio. So I'm Frédéric Chéreau, I'm the CEO of Logic Bio. Here is our uh, forward looking statement as any uh, public company. So Logic Bio is a company dedicated from the beginning to creating a new class of uh, precise, durable and safe gene editing technology. With the ability to unlock some diseases where other modality cannot go, and doing so, we can address the largest number of patients. On this first slide, uh, you can see it really captures what it takes to create a new class of, as I said, safe, precise, and durable gene editing technology. Over our, the past four years, uh, we've noticed that our development is, the development is uniquely differentiated uh, uh, of the new uniquely differentiated platform is tightly integrated in three domains on the left hand side of uh, this slide the construct the delivery mechanism the process development and manufacturing that the integration of these three, three domains which makes the the platform very proprietary and very unique every aspect of this element is designed to provide an improvement on components which has been uh, previously used in modalities and that yields to a very rapid discovery engine and an accelerated uh, development cycle, uh, which, which is at the heart of the company. It will allow us to bring a new drugs candidate on a research basis uh, relatively quickly, I would say six to eight weeks from the, the idea to the conception and the injection of the first mice. And uh, we are, I mean, we, we think we are in a good position to provide scale uh, to this process and move uh, beyond rare diseases when time will come. So that allows us to uh, rapidly create a broad and expensive portfolio with multiple programs, initially in the liver, and that's where we are starting with our MMA program, which is ready to go to the clinic, and then in pre-identified expansion areas for the platform going forward. As I said, there are three main el core elements in uh, this platform. And it begins with the novel DNA construct that we call GeneRide, which is yielding this durable expression of the DNA uh, inside the nucleus. We will, uh, uh, I will share more about uh, more details about the description of GeneRide and its mode of action on the, on the next slide. Then what is important in our platform is this set of innovative scientific capsids. They, they are, for the first time, being biologically selected for their biodistribution to human liver cells, which gives them a pretty unique level of transduction and then and help for the integration. And finally, we have invested uh, in, in process development and non-GMP manufacturing to improve on, on, a C, I mean, on existing traditional biological infrastructures and again, to allow us to scale and support a larger number of, of um, uh, patients. These three components are supported with uh, or by a strong portfolio of IP composed of multiple IP families and a lot of know-how. So GeneRide. GeneRide is, uh, is composed of three ele main elements also. So transgene of interest, the one you want, the protein uh, you want to express. It's coupled with a small peptide called a 2A peptide. And it's flanked by two homology arms. These homology arms are built in a way to mirror a specific site in the, in the genome. GeneRide is a promoterless nuclease-free construct, which is harnessing homologous recombination for a site-specific integration dry, driven by a very strong endogenous promoter to, to deliver therapeutic level of the, of the needed protein. So how does that work? So first the capsid uh, enter, enters the cells and traffic to the nucleus to deliver the vector genome. And you can see gene right in orange uh, is the transgene. The little brown part on the left is uh, the 2A peptide and it's flanked by these two bluish homology arms. Then there is a site-specific recognition when the homology arms are recognizing the same sequence in the, in the genome, they 
I mean, it fosters a homologous recombination to drive the integration into the genome, as you can see at the bottom of the picture. There is then transcription of the fused mRNA, and then the, the ribosome is grabbing this mRNA and does what is called a polycystronic, polycystronic sorry, a protein expression. Basically, we can express more than one, in this case two, proteins with the same RNA, RNA uh, uh, read. These proteins can stay intracellularly or they can traffic uh, to the circulation. So let's talk a little bit about the portfolio. And uh, from the inception of the company, our initial strategy has been to demonstrate the, the human proof of concept in a relevant disease, in our case, MMA, as efficiently as possible. We recently got the approval for our first IND for MMA from the FDA, and we are now moving to the clinic. Next, our strategy is to rapidly expand in other diseases, capitalizing on the learnings we have acquired from the initial program, and to pre-fill rapidly the following set of indications. You can see on the right-hand side the indication selection criteria. Obviously, I unmet need is, is an important selection criteria for us, but we have a special focus on early onset diseases where it's critical to intervene before some non-reversible sequelae occur and, and, and when it's, I mean, the patient, you can treat the patient uh, early. Uh, here, I take the example of intracellular proteins in, for the liver, where our MMA program is. And there are links with other diseases which allow us to pre-fill other, I mean, diseases like krieger najjar where we have uh, animal proof of concept, and it was initially developed with a co uh, academic collaboration. Now it's part of a collaboration with Takeda, but all, uh, also other diseases in parallel. We don't disclose today this, uh, uh, this other diseases, but the blue boxes, the two blue boxes, represent programs for which we have initial proof of concept, and the pink boxes represent programs that we intend to start very soon. We can apply the same principle on liver mediated diseases with secreted proteins, where initially we have demonstrated pro animal proper concept in hemophilia B, as well as in alpha-1 antitrypsin. And soon uh, we expect to go to other tissues, which has not, are not uh, disclosed here, to continue to expand the platform. So I hope, I mean, you can recognize here a real platform which can deliver many treatment for pediatric and adult uh, patients. And finally, we didn't stop at just gene write, which by itself, it's already pretty wide, as I was saying. But we have worked on variations of this, this uh, technology, I mean, editing technology. And for example, uh, we have uh, two programs in which we, we can, thanks to the use of a pharmaceutical agent, trigger a selective advantage, which is a concept I will come back to in a minute, or we can increase the rate of homologous recombination at the, at the time of the injection to treat more cells faster. This will allow us to expand the platform and, and, and uh, to target uh, diseases uh, that we cannot uh, easily target today. So let's talk about uh, our clinical stage program for MMA. So MMA is a life-threatening inborn error of metabolism, and there are no treatment options for the patients today. The prevalence is between 1,000 and 1,500 patients in the US. It's an organic acidemia caused by mutation in the MUT gene. And this mutation results in the inability for the patient to metabolize proteins. Actually, when you give them proteins, there is accumulation of this toxic metabolite called methylmalonic acid. It typically presents soon after birth, and it's highly recognized by the physician that it's very important to treat the patient as early as possible. That's the reason why this disease has been added to the newborn screening panel in every state in, in the US. So the, the disease can be fatal for newborn, and as I said before, there is no treatment option. The only management the, the physician can provide to the patient uh, is basically a high calorie, low protein diet. And despite this diet, or sometimes due to this diet, the patient ex experience poor growth, 
they have frequent rehospitalization, and very often they, they face developmental delays. So it's a just an aggressive management of the symptom. Ultimately, and more recently, what people have tried was liver or liver kidney transplantation, and which are increasingly, increasingly performed. So liver transplantation is an interesting uh, um, tool for, for these patients. And we have only limited data to date on, on, on liver transplantation effect, and especially on young patients. But what you can see on these two panels, where the y-axis is the level of MMS, it's a toxic metabolite, you can see that liver transplantation dramatically reduces, uh, at least for some time, the level of MMA. So that's a good start. The prime of liver transplantation, it's first we have a, a finite number of livers, and it comes with a lot of risk. It's expensive. And, and patients have to be uh, on immunosuppressive drug for the rest of their life. Very often, when patients are getting, I mean, aging a little bit, and we are talking about the teenagers, they, 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 they need to go for another uh, liver transplantation. So we hope that GeneRide will be kind of a molecular trans liver transplantation by modifying some cells initially that hopefully we will be able uh, to decrease the MMA levels. So here are some um, uh, preclinical studies we have performed. So the, there is a mice MMA model, which is very severe. And uh, we, we, nevertheless, we've been able to rescue a lot of these mice. What you can see here on this panel, you can see we have improved uh, the survival rate of these mice. And, and we have also improved the growth and we have decreased the circulating MMS. What is interesting in this model, uh, which is it's a diet challenge model. And by changing the protein content of the CHO of these uh, mice, we can uh, recapitulate what would happen in patients uh, when they experience a metabolic crisis. So I was talking about uh, a selective uh, advantage before, and uh, let me come back uh, uh, to one of the points first, which is all, all the mice we are uh, treating are very young, between one day old and a couple of weeks old. And uh, at the beginning of this, I mean, after the injection of our uh, product, GeneRide, uh, we modify a limited number of cells. And that's what you can see here at one month. You know. the, the number of cells is here characterized by the albumin 2A, which is a, a good PD marker we are using to quantify integration. And it allows us I mean, to avoid uh, 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 biopsies, which is obviously a good thing to do uh, in, in mice, but more, more importantly in patients. But back to, to uh, my point about selective advantage, what we, when we inject the mice uh, at a few days old, we don't know the genotype. And so we even inject the heterozygotes. You can see on the dark, dark lines that the number of cells or albumin 2A labels are not changing over time, over six months here on this graph. But when, and when, if you look at the mice which has been treated, you can see in orange, you can see that the, the albumin 2A is, is growing, which, which is a proof that more and more cells, the higher percentage of cells, in the liver has been modified. And in fact, the modified cells are taking over the non-modified cells when there is a, 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 I mean, growth of the liver or regeneration of the liver, which is sometimes triggered by, by the, the disease. On the right hand side, it's, uh, you can see that when albumin uh, 2A or integration uh, or number of cells modified is increasing, we have a nice correlation with uh, MMA levels or a nice correlation also with weight, which are two very important and clinically relevant endpoints. Uh, I mean, we all very often say that uh, uh, an image uh, is worth a thousand words, but you can see on this video that the vehicle treated mice in the, in the, in the corner is not very active, uh, is as a hunch position and is a little bit smaller than the treated mice. 
what you you can i mean when you look at the treated mice it's uh, acting almost like a normal mice exploring the cage that it would do in this cage so and that's uh, uh, when we show this type of uh, um, uh, video to our key opinion leader uh, they, they very, very often tell us that what they see after liver transplantation, they see that the patients are getting weight and are getting more and more active. So we hope that that's the type of results we will see in our clinical trial. So talking about our clinical trial, which is called Sunrise, it's an open label phase one, two uh, clinical trial in pediatric MMA patients. It's a one-time treatment we will uh, we envision to enroll eight patients across six sites in the US. The primary objective will be safety and tolerability. Secondary objective will be changes to, from baseline to uh, multiple biomarkers, uh, such as MMA levels and, and, and uh, some PD markers, such as albumin 2A. We will also have some exploratory uh, objectives uh, in uh, some clinical, uh, clinical efficacy outcomes. And all the patients will go under cost, uh, prophylactic cost, cost, corticosteroid, corticosteroid regimen to mitigate the, the potential uh, cellular immune response. So it's an open label trial, as I said before, and we will have two cohorts. Uh, of uh, patients. We plan to enroll two cohorts of patients in a parallel dose escalation and intra cohort de-escalation. So the trial will, will start with the light blue box on the top with patients aged between 3 and 12 years old. And I think being able to convince uh, um, regulators to let us intervene uh, in patients as young as 3 years old uh, tells a lot about the quality of the work and, 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 and the and the expected safety of the technology. So after two patients being enrolled at this first dose level, we will advance to either a, or a younger patient, six months, between six months and two years old, and, and, and or we will increase the dose, or we will do both together. I mean, what is, what is important here to notice is that we are, we've been able to um, enroll patients when it's relevant. As I said before, you want to intervene as early on, uh, as early as possible in this patient. And here being able, to have the, being able to have the first patient as young as three years old and potentially the third one as young as six months old, I think is a, is a very important uh, uh, characteristic of this trial. So that was our first program. As I said, we have an, another program on Krieger Naja we are developing with uh, uh, Takeda. And krieger naja is another inborn error of metabolism with no treatment options. It's, it's caused by a mutation in a gene called UGT1A1. It's a very rare disease. There are about 200 patients in the US. And uh, the mutation uh, le le leads to an accumulation of bilirubin, which is another uh, meta me uh, toxic metabolic. There is no treatment options for, for these patients today. The only uh, tool the physician can take is an aggressive blue light phototherapy uh, and patients have to go for 12 hours sometimes 16 hours a day under a blue light uh, bed uh, to break down this uh, bilirubin and uh, this technology and this tool or this technology become less and less effective with age so the accumulation of bilirubin has a high risk of mental impairment and 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 on life also as you can see the life expectancy is not very long so this patient also uh, go uh, under a uh, liver transplant when it's needed. Here are some data we have generated uh, uh, initially with, with this uh, collaboration. Uh, and where you can see that the survival rate uh, in the treated mice in orange or blue, two different doses, is, is uh, much better than non-treated mice. And on the right, you can see the levels of bilirubin, circulating bilirubins are also significantly different. In the, in the treated mice versus the non-treated mice. So maybe to conclude, I'd like to say we have uh, assembled, I think a world-class uh, uh, team of experts in rare diseases, innovative uh, uh, technologies, and we are, we, have, we are supported by a, a tremendous set of investors who are 
all together, I mean, uh, uh, going in this journey for, for developing a new class of uh, gene editing technology applicable for very young patients. So over the past uh, three years, since we started this uh, uh, program for MMA, a lot has been achieved. As I mentioned before, the IND has been cleared. Uh, we have uh, uh, signed this partnership with Takeda, and we have demonstrated a lot of proof of concept in, in uh, preclinical models. 2021 should be a busy, busy year for us because we intend to treat the first patient at the beginning of 2021. We will. Uh, continue to communicate on operation updates on the trial. Uh, we will also share some data on retrospective uh, natural history study we have started this year. And we will continue to uh, expand the platform beyond what it is today. On the CAPSID side, which is a, a, a part I have not covered too much to date, uh, but we have been able to uh, 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 develop some CAPSIDs, which for the liver seems to be very good capsids and much better than what has been used to date. And we will uh, continue to share data of these capsids on a new translational model uh, at the beginning of 2021. I will thank you. <laughs>